cogent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters. And today on the show, we have Jonathan Levy. He has a really cool website. Oh, he's very excited with a crazy, amazing studio in the background. He has a podcast called Becoming Superhuman and also a website at jle.vi. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It is my pleasure. I got shown up by the background of his, his podcasting studio is way better than mine. But you, you're a serial entrepreneur. You've done a ton of different things. Give us your bio in two seconds. Yeah. So whew, two seconds. I know, right? I've never I'll... had a real job. That's the two second version. <laughs> I've never had, I've never gotten a paycheck. I didn't sign myself. Uh, but I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. I sold my first successful company uh, at 23, started it at 16, went on, did the soul searching journey is what I'm doing, helping people, decided that it wasn't. And that's how I got into online education, more specifically helping people uh, optimize their learning experience and just kind of their health and fitness and sleep. And that's where I am now. I really like what I do. Helping people become (laughs) superhuman. I love that. What are some of the courses you've created? Because we want to go down the path of how the heck you do this, especially in different niches. Mm, yeah, so it all started with this course called Become a Super Learner, uh, which honestly was a side hustle. We were talking before we hit record about side hustles. This was a side hustle to get me to my next paycheck. Uh, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do some stuff in Africa. Maybe I'll do something that will be venture backed. I don't know when my next check's coming. A lot of people had asked me about speed reading and memory, which I had done kind of very intensively uh, and had been trained by private tutors to do. I was like, well, I could figure out a way, you know, translate all their materials from the language that I learned it into English, put it up online and see what happens. The beauty of of having that skill set is I decided, you know, one day I was going to do an online course. Uh, So I went online and did all the speed reading I could about online courses and online marketing and all this kind of other stuff that I knew nothing about, like video production, video editing. I think it took me like a week or two. And then I just put out the course. It became one of Udemy's top selling courses of all time. And Why then do you it kind think of that is? Snowballed. Right? Because I know I have clients that do some amazing things on Udemy, but there's so <laughs> many courses and so many providers. Why did yours go to the top? There's a lot of factors. Number one, I won't deny the element of luck and the element of timing. When I got on there, there were 10,000 courses. Today, I think there's 40,000. So that helps. Uh, I also teach something that pretty much everyone wants to learn. I've very rarely met people who, when they hear what I do, don't say, oh my God, I need that, right? Everyone wants to read faster. Everyone wants to remember things more effortlessly. Uh, And then I think the third thing is like, I approached it like I approach everything. I just open up 100 tabs, speed read 100 articles, and, you know, beat it. I did the same thing when I did my podcast. I did the same thing when I did my book. And it's like, uh, anything you want, this is kind of my spiel, if you will, my uh, tagline. Anything you want, the barrier between you and that objective is just learning. So that's how I that's how I do stuff. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so when we're <laughs> what's funny is I think of all the people listening to this probably on two times the speed right now. So we probably sound right. like chipmunks because they're not speed reading. <laughs> it's hard to make people uh, prioritize that though, isn't it? I feel like it's like, oh, I really want to do that one day. Oh, it's one of those. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I eventually, I've said that a thousand times and I still haven't done it. I read pretty quick, but not speed totally. reading. So how do you get past that objection of like, I know I want to do it someday, but not right now? Yeah, that was a big thing in designing the course. And I think I didn't invent 95% of the techniques that we teach. What I invented and innovated in was how do we teach it? So bringing it online and then breaking it down into 30 minute a day digestible chunks. So if you give me 30 minutes a day for four to five days a week for 10 weeks, I'll teach you to do amazing stuff. Uh, Whereas most of these courses are like, especially at the college level, you see these flyers all over college campuses and they're like, come 12 hours, two days in a row, we'll teach you. They don't touch the memory stuff, but they claim to, you know, double your reading speed. Uh, We made it super digestible. And uh, I think our marketing's pretty good. Like one of the, one of the selling points is I once calculated from the age of say about 10 years old, when I really started reading proficiently, I got really into the goosebumps series. Uh, To the age of 24, when I learned speed reading, I calculated an average of two hours a day of homework, business reading, emails, whatever. 
did all the math. It was nine consecutive months, Jamie, that I like wasted of my life. So like what's dollarization? Exactly. You're like, okay, I'm putting it into perspective. Now I want to teach my 10 year old how to speed read. What the heck? That's, that's a very valid point. (laughs) It does make it way more important because time is really, really important. Only thing we can't get back. Okay. So tell me more because now going forward to the future, right? Mm -hmm. Where we are now. From then, you've you've done a lot of different courses. How do you know what works versus what doesn't? I work with a lot of clients and they're like, I want to do a course. I don't know what it's going to be. How do we validate and know? Because there's so many courses out there now. Yeah. So I'm one of these entrepreneurs. I've been in entrepreneurship way before the whole lean startup thing. So I've done it the crappy way and spent, I once spent like $40,000 of my own money on a product that nobody used. Uh, and then I found out about the lean startup and getting real and all these amazing frameworks and Steve Blank. Uh, and I, you know, I learned it the hard way. I wish that I could just pick up a book. So I validate my products really, really simply. I talk to customers, even with this first course, I went online to my Facebook friends. I emailed like 500 people from my business school class. And I was like, what would you say if I could, you know, and there's a right and a wrong way to do lean. Yeah, wait, and, give and me I've more. Yeah, great. Way. Give me more. Because this is the thing. So people, so I, I have a beta process that I work people through also. And mm-hmm. there's so many questions that come up <laughs> as we're going through. Like, oh, well, what do I say in the email? I'm like, this isn't rocket science. But everybody wants to know exactly how to right. get the right thing because it seems like it's gray. And they're like, I don't know what sure. to do with this, right? And they freak out. So walk us through what that process is that you've done. So I will, but I also want to... Uh, kind of disclaimer and say that I had immediately out of business school, the reason that I was wandering around looking for an idea is I had an idea and it failed in kind of a blaze of glory. And it's because I went about this lean customer development process, but I went about it the wrong way. So the wrong way is to go and say, hey, Jamie, I have an idea for a course that does this, 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 and this. It's this price. Will you buy it? Of course, you're going to say yes, because you're going to be nice and you're going to be polite, but you're not actually going to buy it. Nope. Whereas if I ask you open questions, so this is the right way, like, hey, Jamie, how frustrated are you with your reading speed? Do you ever think about it? Uh, do you forget a lot of stuff? What stuff do you forget? If someone were to teach you memory tricks, what would you pay for that? Would you pay for that? How much time do you have? Like, these are super open-ended questions where you can formulate enough of a rough answer so that when I come in, I've addressed all your objections in advance. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, I wrote, a lot of people ask me about speed reading. This was like a big Facebook post. A lot of people ask me about speed reading. More than a few of you have, uh, you know, tried to buy me lunch to get me to explain to you this whole 10-week program that I did, which, by the way, cost a ton of money, (laughs) like, to have a private tutor sit on your head. Uh, I'm thinking about creating a a program that will help you learn this stuff online. What aspect of that would be concerning, interesting, whatever. So people come out and they're like, it needs to be around 50 bucks. Okay, cool. I didn't know at the time the whole Udemy discount situation. So 50 bucks. They brought up stuff that I didn't even consider. Like it needs to have a mobile app. Well, okay, I'm not going to build a mobile app myself. So that brought me to a marketplace like Udemy or Thinkific or whatever. Uh, I need lifetime access. I don't want to pay a monthly membership fee. That's interesting because I would have done a monthly membership. Everyone's always talking about subscription businesses and how great they are. I would have done that. And and my customers made it very clear. Like, I want to buy it now, but I can't commit to actually taking it right now. Yep. By the way, you know this as well as I do. 27% of books that people buy, they actually read, um, which is, you know, something that you have to work through as an entrepreneur. Like, am I selling stuff people don't need? This is, no, this it's is just what that's me. how it is. <laughs> You know? That's me and you were, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I have opinions on courses. I don't sell any of mine because I don't think people use them. So I, I have very strong opinions on some of this stuff too because that is that is also mm-hmm. a point. Now, again, their fault, technically. You buy a book, you don't read it, your fault, but continue. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but I also I think it's interesting because different people need different things from a course. So I used to beat myself up about this. Like, you know, obviously what we're selling isn't that interesting. Maybe we're just good marketers. Like, are we selling snake oil? But here's the thing. Uh, Number one, do people take the course and do people really benefit from it? Yes. You know, we've got thousands of people writing in saying you changed my life and I got called in for cheating and all kinds of like really funny stories. But the second thing is some people, what they need is an assurance, right? So like I might buy Tony Robbins book money because all I actually need is to know that if if the shit hits the fan, I can just open this book and it'll be okay. And that's actually what I need and it's worth the $10 to Mm -hmm. me. Um, I do think though, 
and this is a really interesting thing that we've learned by producing premium level content at the $300, $400 price point, mm -hmm. is I can just turn a knob, which is price, and I can actually get you to take the course. So yeah, about 20 to 30% of our Udemy people buy the Udemy course, but our masterclass, which is you know 10 times more content and 10 times more worksheets and premium service and whatever, the vast majority of those people open it up immediately. Open it, uh, but and they take do the course. It? Okay. <laughs> mm, I okay. mean, I, I don't I don't track each student, but I can tell you there's a lot more engagement in that in that premium level course. Yes, because sure. they're yes, they got more skin in the game. They care more. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. I I totally understand that too. Uh, I don't want to. We're let's, we're not going to go down the crazy path <laughs> that I will. That's okay. Debate for a long period of time, but again, my own <laughs> my own things. I'll do a Facebook live about this later. Uh, but when when we're going through the beta, seriously. <laughs> when we're going through the beta process of of really trying to validate, you ask all those questions, you get all that information, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I think I have a better idea on what this is. What do you do then? Uh, so typically, I mean, if it were software, I would just build, and I've done this, I've, I've run software businesses, and I would just build like a minimally viable product mm -hmm. with some smoke and mirrors where it's like a lot of manual stuff happening in the background. Uh, I always try to validate at the simplest possible level. So my first online course was MacBook webcam, looked like Vaseline, took a lamp, a desk lamp, changed the bulb. Actually, I couldn't even change the bulb, so I took a, uh, there's a white bulb, I took a yellow plastic bag and put it over so the lighting would be normal. I put a towel over the keyboard of the Mac so that it would, the sound would not bounce off the screen. It sounds awful. I ended up having to record the course after after another two years, but, oh, and by the way, blanket on the wall, pinned. But oh, yeah, uh, that it. course has made Great. more money than than almost any other course that we've done, <laughs> which is crazy, right? It's like timing, timing, timing. Hmm. Um, so I validated the idea as cheaply as possible. I said I wasn't gonna spend more than $100 on supplies. I wouldn't even buy, I mean, today I have this 1080p webcam that I love, right? And I have like this 4K ridiculous setup, but I wouldn't even spend 60 bucks on a Logitech webcam or what is the blue, this microphone that I'm using is another, like 70 bucks. Wouldn't do it because I wanted to validate as cheaply as possible. I used iMovie, wouldn't pay the $10 a month for Adobe Premiere, like validate cheaply. I think I spent a total of 40 or 50 hours producing the whole course. So, um, oh, okay. so put you it up online. 40 or 50 hours even before you got payment from people. So you decided to go, because oh, yeah. what I usually suggest is have people buy it first, right? So we actually get the payments mm -hmm. in advance. Um, and before I would have done that. <laughs> okay. I absolutely would have done that had I had an audience mm. or known anything about cold marketing. I mean, cold leads and stuff like that. Today we could do that. Um, do but you do that I, now? I'm actually mentoring. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, what do yeah. you do now? So... <sighs> I think at the core of everything we do is relationship building, right? Like I just launched, kind of coincided with with this interview because I revealed some stuff that I was really only gonna reveal around about the time of this interview about my own kind of financial situation. But I just launched a course on passive income, right? Which is like super far outside of my wheelhouse as the learning and productivity guy. Mm -hmm. However, thousands of people are buying it because, and it's not because I'm so great, my marketing's so awesome. <laughs> I write half decent copy, but it's because these people trust me and I give them good reason to trust me. And I've put out courses on testosterone, basically like, my model is I'll learn something that takes years, I'll try to learn it in a few months, I'll create a course about it, and I'll share with people the 20% that they need to know that gives them 80% of the results. Um, so I've proven time and time again, I created a course on like how do you build a life of meaning and purpose um, with a mentor of mine. I created a course on how do you brand yourself on the internet. Uh, and consistently, again, I'm not the expert on personal branding or testosterone or anything like that, but consistently I provide people many times the value that they're investing uh, in my courses. And so it's all about relationship building. I always like to say you can't start a relationship with someone if you don't have their contact info. So <laughs> at the kind of like ground level of it, it's creating a, like creating a link to those people, uh, getting email information, getting a way that you can actually reach out to them and then provide value. It's like Gary Vee's whole thing, you know? The jab, 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 jab right? Jab, jab, exactly. I'm gonna hit the camera in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I what I love about this is that 
you're proclaiming like, I know a lot about this, but I'm going to help you MVP the only information you need because we are in a world of way too much information. And it's oh, really, right. really hard for most of us to just get the 80-20 the rule because then we have to go through the 100% to know what the 20% is. And instead, we just have nope. somebody like you do it for us. Yeah, the truth of sense. it is, mm -hmm. though, the on every single course that I've built has come out of one issue of mine. Like I'm solving my own problem in a sense, which is I get really tired of people asking me the same questions. So the speed reading was like, I'm really tired of people taking me to lunch and asking me like, how do you read so fast? Uh, the productivity course came out of, I was sitting next to a friend of mine and everything that I would do on my computer, all these like shortcuts and apps that I have that automatically file things. He's like, well, what was that? What was, he wouldn't let me work for like two hours. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just record like 50 screenshot videos of every app that I use that automates everything. And it became like many, many thousands of dollars a month in revenue. Uh, and the same goes for the testosterone course. Like people in my life would be like, hey, you kind of bulked up, like what's the deal? So when I get really tired of explaining something, I'm like, all right, I can help 100 people by explaining it one by one, or I can help 100,000 people by, you know, recording videos, and that's that's part of the whole automation thing. One too <laughs> many. Thank goodness we live in a world of technology right now, because my gosh, imagine we didn't have that. So let's talk about automation, because I know that's sort of a sweet spot of yours also, and I think everybody knows they need this, and pr putting the priority on it makes it uh, is a little harder, because there's a thousand things we quote unquote could do. So where do you start on automation in general? How do you like, when you get in somebody's life and go, we're going to help you automate, where do we even start? Right. On an individual level, as opposed to a business level, well, you're asking. Well, I, I personally think the business and in, and personal sort of intertwine a little bit. Let's start with business and then maybe we'll go sure. into the personal side. <laughs> sure. So I think we have to kind of split out automation between like human level automation, which is something that I've really prioritized over the last year. Uh, meaning creating manuals so that this is going to sound awful, but creating manuals so that people function as well as machines. It's like every Isn't episode of our podcast yeah, comes exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's not though. It's not though. Cause like, you know, we all say like, I'm only human or human error. And it's like humans are really bad at doing consistent work. It's really sad. Actually, we suck at it. We're amazing at creative work. We're amazing at like analytical thinking. We really suck at, at repetitive work. That's why we need um, robots to hurry up with all this, just so we know. That's where I'm, I'm coming totally. in. Totally. <laughs> Keep going. Totally. So I think we need to split that out. Uh, we can talk about like process design and stuff like that after. Uh, but when it comes to like business automation, uh, I'm looking at anything that has patterns. So for example, uh, you know, an email comes in with a certain heading or a certain tag that's automatically fired off to a different system. Uh, we live on Zapier. I don't know if, if your audience would know the reference, but we live on Zapier. We've had entire product lines that are managed by Zapier. Really? Entire okay. interaction it's flows. Cra it's crazy how much it looks like it can do because mm -hmm. we use it. But, oh, my gosh, it's so – there's so much, and it makes it hard it's to do insane. the 80-20 side of it. Okay, tell me more about what it's you guys insane. do there. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, we don't offer any product that's not automatically delivered. Okay. In fact, the only exception to that is now we accept Bitcoin and that requires someone to actually go in and, and check our wallet before we send the product. But everything else, we literally will not offer a product that requires any human labor to deliver for two reasons. One, it's n there's nothing more annoying than like when you order something and you wait for it to be delivered. So we don't offer t-shirts, we don't offer stickers, we don't offer any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, and number two is, you know, human labor is not super scalable. So all of our products are automatically machine delivered, even our books printed on demand at, you know, within minutes of the order coming. Um, so that's one thing. We also, I think, do a pretty good job of automating interactions. So I learned very, very early on in a marketing class before even my business degree that there's an element of training your customers that I think many people overlook. So when you go to McDonald's and you instinctively know what a number three supersize is and you say it in their language mm -hmm. and you expect that they're gonna say, do you want fries with that? You know, you just know. You're speaking their language, which is essentially training the customer. So we train our customers really, really well. They know where to ask the questions. They know what kind of response to expect. They're pretty clear about how to do things. And anytime a question comes up more than a few times, we revised the product. Mm. So we had this worksheet that people were like, I'm not getting it. You know, I'm not getting any better at it. I'm like, 
ah, okay, people don't understand this is a diagnostic, not a training worksheet. The whole point is to figure out what your natural capability is and then move on. So we just revised the whole worksheet. We pushed it out to 90,000 people with an email saying like, hey guys, this wasn't clear, download the new version. No more questions about that, right? And we do that at, at every level in our business. Okay, um, so I have questions on that sorry, because that's, no, no, I, I love this. I just want to go deeper into it because that's the thing. When when you're a busy business owner and you have a thousand things, right? And mm -hmm. that like that worksheet seems very small. So you sort of push it low on the priority list, even though if you solve it once, it won't happen mm -hmm. again and again and again. But we prioritize to maybe the mm -hmm. bane of our existence, right? So we have all these little things that never really get uh, scooped up. So how do you even put the focus on doing that. Uh, I was afraid you were going to ask me the prioritization <laughs> question. It's so hard because I'm spoiled like absolute rotten in the sense that, I, you know, I don't have to do most of the stuff that I'm doing every day and, and I have an amazing team and they do a lot of it. So I end up just working on whatever tickles my fancy. <laughs> Everyone's Which like, I hate you way. right now. No, <laughs> it's not a good way to prioritize. Uh, you know, fires come up. Like we have fires where we're like, oh my god, our tracking software just stopped working. Like, where's our pixel? Yeah, who deleted? Who deleted the pixel? Uh, so we do have fires, and obviously those take priority. Uh, I try to focus on the things that are going to move the needle for the business. I have this uh, exercise that I often do called the Priority Star. It's basically mapping out priorities in a visual five pointed star, and then which one is going to drive which one you spend five minutes on it and it kind of tells you where you're going. Do you have a worksheet um, or something like that on that? Because that sounds awesome. I do have a worksheet on that. I could send something like that. Why? I even have a lecture on it. Yeah, well, See, this now is I don't thing. have to so, explain how it works. I know, exactly. I want all of the things. Like even talking about Zapier or Zapier or whatever we call it, um, mm -hmm. I want like the list of what the people are already doing because I know what we've got in ours and I know what my clients have in theirs. But I really wish we could just take all of the information from everyone on what's working right. systems-wise because it's a pain Agreed. in the butt to create it all yourself. Totally. Totally. I think Zapier does a good job of giving recommended recipes based on the apps that you select. But that's one of the big differentiators between our kind of premium level courses and our not premium level courses is we've got a lot of apps. Like I've got all kinds of crazy stuff on this computer that reacts to different finger motions uh, and like all kinds of touch bar stuff. You said you just got the I new Macs. So like all kinds of touch. You use the touch bar? Oh, man. All right. I'm going to have to so buy I've your customized course. It. Yeah. What, 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 so, where do I buy? <laughs> so here's here's like an example. Okay. Right now on your touch bar, you have nothing because we're in Skype. I have share screen, call recorder, sound preferences, hang up, mute. So I can just like can hang up hit on a, me right like now. Like I've customized the hell out of it. Wow. So I, I'm a big proponent of like I'll spend a lot of time up front, even if it maybe takes two years for me to get that 30 seconds back. You know, like I could go to window call recorder, but it's it's the thinking. It's like if I'm in this moment right now, right, and or it's just in, in certain situations, like if my neighbor's dog starts barking and it somehow makes it through my soundproof walls, I can just hit mute and it's like saving me hassle, saving me thinking. Or another example, uh, I recently interviewed Noah Kagan. Mm -hmm. I asked him for thing. his top productivity yeah. tip. Uh -huh. And he's like, uh, download Hazel. It's just this app that automatically, like you set it up, it takes a lot of time to set up, <laughs> but it automatically files stuff for you. So huh. any invoice that I have needs to go to my bookkeeper, right? Yeah. Well, I've set this thing up that any file that I download that comes from one of 10 different invoicing, you know, platforms, green invoice, all these other popular ones, it just fires it off automatically and shares it on Google Drive. It's like, how much time does that save me? I mean, it's, it's taken me like 20, 30 minutes to set up and tweak, fine. And it probably saves me 15 seconds every day. But it's like, how much less hassle is that? And there's just a million little examples like that to where, you know, everything in my system, in my company, in my email is all as automated as possible. Well, because you're refining for the, 15 uh, seconds worth, whereas most of the entrepreneurs are like, I have chunks of this much that they could okay, probably so do way, that. way better, right? Yes, let's talk about let's that. Let's talk about that. Um, so here's the big thing that people don't like to hear because we all think we're super important, but email is like the worst waste of time. It's just awful. Like I, I heard Tim Ferriss say, and I really like this, email is someone else's priorities for your time. And it's so true. Like uh, if you can minimize, I mean, this sounds so awful to say, but like say it. The, the biggest places where you can save time is in optimizing communication, right? So like you and I can interact for two years by email and I won't know you as well as a one hour phone conversation. So I optimize and I have like special short links 
which of course are linked up to keyboard shortcuts that say, hey, I know this is really impersonal, but why don't we just hop on a 15 minute call? Can you just book it right here because time zones are super confusing, blah, 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 blah. And I just punch a three character code on my keyboard and it shoots it out and we save 15 emails. Um, but you do a 15 minute, okay, let's talk about this for a second because I, I have a bunch minutes, of, yeah. yeah, I have a bunch <laughs> of clients that do this. <laughs> so they have courses and they have people that are emailing them within their course. So then they have moderators, mm -hmm. which is great. And I have the same setup. Uh, and I was chatting with uh, Pat Flynn about this the other day because I was like, how do you manage everything? And I don't know if I'm allowed to share this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, he's like, oh, I just hop on the phone with my assistant and she writes everything in my voice because I'm just telling her what to write and right. while I'm driving. I'm he's like, on the record about that. Okay, good. <laughs> it's always on yeah, a mastermind. On I never know if I'm allowed to say stuff. Anyway, so so to me, I was like, that's genius. So why have I not done that before? I don't listen to his podcast. Whoops. Uh, but... Being able to do something like that and have that system. So I have clients that are setting specific things up, but I want your tweaks and hacks because we have canned responses from the regular ones, canned which is great. great. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have somebody else doing the main email box, right? Or my assistant right. is mine, right? Give me more than just that. I want all of the okay. secret sauce to, because we don't even want to see it. The biggest one? Yeah. Yeah. The biggest one, uh, my dad worked at Intel in like the early days and Scott McNeely, who's one of the founders of Intel, always told him, for a company to function efficiently, decisions need to be made at the lowest possible level. Mm -hmm. So like, at, uh, not to like shit on janitors or anything, but if the janitor doesn't need to ask to order more supplies when he runs out, like mm -hmm. how much time does that save in billing and whatever and whatever. So everyone on my team is empowered to fix any problem, customer service or otherwise, as long as it costs under a hundred bucks. They don't even ask me. And I think that's like a really great rule. You can adjust the number. Um, but I try to, I try to push things down and it's, it's not like pushing off decisions, it's empowering people. So like there's some areas of my business that I don't want to empower people, but, uh, I mean, I don't even pay myself. I don't pay my staff. They pay themselves. One person on the staff pays everyone else, uh, which might sound weird cause she's in the Philippines, but it's like that trust, that empowerment to say yeah. like, Hey, I totally trust you. If you need a new computer, go out and buy it. And I know you're going to account for it and, you know, take it off the business billing and whatever needs to happen. Um, so that's one really, really big thing. Uh, I would say having rules of engagement with customers because okay. form emails, sometimes, you know, there's gaps. And I will say, I do believe that you, if, if anything falls in between processes, that means you're missing processes. Like any exception that comes up once will come up more than once. However, uh, I do think that there need to be rules of engagement with customers. So for example, uh, how do we treat a customer if they're very angry? Like, are we the kind of company that says, listen, sir, you need to, you need to calm down? Or are we the kind of company that just listens? Because those are two different kinds of way to, ways to deal with customers. Mm. Um, are we the kind of company, you know, what's our, what's our top objective? Um, things like that. So we have these rules of engagement uh, that I don't want to go into a little, like too much detail because some of them are private and, and well, proprietary. And well, deep, let me, but, yeah, let me ask you this about uh -huh. that because how, how do we do that? So do we just look at a blank Google doc and go, these are our rules of engagement for mm -hmm. email or as things come in and people don't know what to do, we create the document. Like what's the best exactly. way to do that? Sure. So I think one of the best, best, best business books I've read. And it's interesting because I read it so late in my career mm -hmm. after having sold a company and after having failed at managing people uh, was the E-Myth Revisited. Have you, you read that? I say that. I knew. Gosh. I just interviewed Michael it's, Gerber. Every, so this, I feel like, is the only book that people bring up about systems. Like, literally, there's no other books about systems. And the E-Myth was such a long so time good. ago. It's so good. One of my one of my main books, my mentor told me way back when, 10, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like it's not updated for tech. So I wish we could blend Have you seen the two. It? Yeah, but that's still like five years ago, isn't it? It's still a little old, yeah. Five, well, five, so a lot I mean, changes yeah. in five years. I'm just saying Facebook. No, that's no, but you, but you but you know what I mean. So I'm trying. That's why I'm asking you these questions because I feel like our the way that we can actually interact with systems has been changing. Which is awesome. Right. I'm going to drop a bombshell on you. Let's Are you it. ready for this? Yes. My biggest business epiphany of the last two years, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, one of the greatest things I've ever done in my business. Are you ready for this? One morning, I'm, I'm like having my shower, doing my best thinking of the day. And uh, I realized like 
this this Michael Gerber thing is spot on. I need to train my people. Like the people don't read all the manuals that we create. Like we've got hundreds of PDF manuals on how to do everything. And I was like, oh my God, we are in the online course creation business. Yep. Let's create online courses. So we have a course called Superhuman Enterprises 101. It has over 100 lectures. And here's where it gets good. Mm -hmm. Anyone who joins the team is expected to create lectures because good. they need to know not only what mm -hmm. it's like to to participate in online courses to see what our students experience, they need to know what it's like for us in the company. So our marketing manager, our Facebook ads manager, my personal assistant, our video editor, everybody has contributed to this course. And some of it's like super mundane, like here's how we create subtitles for our lectures. I go in, I use this software, but just so you know, sometimes it gets Jonathan's name wrong. It spells it with an O instead of an A, so I do a find all. It's like a 15 minute lecture on how to create subtitles for our courses. I love this. Everything is in there. Okay. Like everything. What, everything. what platform do you use for that specifically? It's, I'm going to regret saying this, but it's, it's on the same server and same everything as our premium courses. Okay. We just so hide the course, but it runs on Thinkific. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's the, that's the mm -hmm. other piece that a lot of, so I love this. This, this is what I'm talking about. And this is where I feel like we haven't updated from the e-myth from before. It's like create mm -hmm. SOPs mm -hmm. and you're like, that's great. Nobody reads them, and, <laughs> right? Or, or it's harder to, anyway. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. When I've been asking I'll give people, you another book, though, really yeah, quick. Yeah. Uh, read uh, Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. It's also outdated because yeah. he's like, use Jing for screenshots. I'm yeah. like, nobody uses Jing anymore, dude. But uh, that's where I got the idea that like just don't write text manuals anymore. Yeah. We so, just don't do it. We do screenshots, screencasts for everything. Yeah, which makes perfect sense, too. And that that's the biggest thing. So Chris is a good friend. I was just in the Philippines speaking at his event. And um, oh, cool. I want other I want everybody else's things, right? Because I feel like we're reinventing the wheel each time because most people, totally. the way that they're um, working on it right now, it's Google Docs, right? It's like links to random videos that are five minutes long. It's like a playbook that has weird oh. update, right? I just don't feel like everybody's Online got- Online course. Yeah, it makes Online so course. much more sense. I can't buy that from right. you, can I? Come on. <laughs> so we're in the process of building this like premium everything whatever of course myself and a friend of mine who also has a pretty large uh online course business and and this is the kind of stuff that we're going into like corporate structure like what's the best corporate structure turns out barbados just saying um but going into all this stuff of like okay how do you actually hire and train employees how do you actually brand and market stuff how do you write copy in your business so we want it to be it's 21 courses and that's going to be one of them of how do you hire and train employees yep. automatically Yep. Because I've never explained, or uh, that's an exaggeration. If I've explained something to someone, I've recorded it and then put it up on the on the platform. Oh, I love this. All right, so that's what we're trying to do too, is <laughs> curate all the pieces so that way sure. people don't have to reinvent the wheel. We live in a, a wonderful world right now, sure. and we shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel a thousand times, and yet we listen to the podcast over and over again. We're like, that's a great idea. Oh, that's a great idea. Hmm. Anyway, right. so <laughs> let's keep going down the, the automation path because – Sure. We are an in information overload. We know that we need to create and record and and do all that, but we don't do it. So so or we don't we don't prioritize it or whatever it is. So how can we do what you have, which is massive, on like an incremental scale? Like give us one of those 30 day things so that way we don't feel like it's overwhelming mm. and crazy. Okay. Clarify a little bit in on what I do. Like which aspect of what I do? The I do a lot of the... acro yoga. I'm happy to help people get, <laughs> good, do get in on right that. I want to see that. Uh, no, the, well, you're really good, at least what I've heard so oh. far, really, really good at being able to um, record, systemize, do something once and not have to think yes. about it over and over and over again, the automation side. Yes. In business specifically, and I'm sure in your personal life too. So how do we jump on that bandwagon without feeling overwhelmed by all of the things and videos, et cetera, that we could be doing? Mm, I think what you have to do is look at things in quantity and also in annoyance. But it, I sometimes just go on quantity. Like it really annoys me. So here's one thing everyone can do right now. Great. Go into Google Drive. Like as business owners, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, we have like 54 subscription services every month. Yep. It's super annoying. Okay, and that means 54 times that I'm hitting archive every single month. It's just annoying. Uh, and each one takes a second, but that's 54 seconds a month. That's a minute a month. 
I'm just kidding. It's it's much more than that because actually research shows that if you lose your focus for a second, you're gone for five minutes. Seriously. Right. Um, so first off, hopefully everyone in your audience already has email notifications and that little red bubble turned off. Like I'm going to take that as, as for granted, like no email notifications. But the next thing you can do is go into Google, right? Uh, hit the search button, search for your receipt. Uh, and then, you know, modify with the search filter as your receipt or your invoice or whatever, and then hit filter messages like these. Mm -hmm. And just put them all into archive, mark them as read and move them into uh, all messages or whatever automatically, right? So that's one thing that's probably the, the 50 instance annoyance. Now we go to the thing that's 40 instance annoyance. So that email that you get from your customers that says, you know, hey, what's the difference between this product and this? Uh, and you set up an a can message auto reply. You can even set up Zapier to automatically reply to any message that set that has this phrase, right? Really? How accurate is that? Because I feel like that's a little. I don't, I don't know. That's where we have humans do it. Okay, that makes. <laughs> we sense. have a human hit a button that yeah. does it. But I'm thinking of new ideas as I'm going. I along, so appreciate so I it. Do. Yeah. No, and this is the thing. So because we're so overwhelmed, I love you going, oh, this is one issue. This is because we can check off issues. I feel like we can go, oh, I can do that today. That's only going to take this long. But we don't yeah. even have and, the, and like the scope. The scope seems so huge. Okay. Well, I mean, so we've talked about email. Mm -hmm. Email is like the biggest time suck, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it, I don't think you got an auto response because you and I coordinated like a year ago. But in the last year, I've implemented everybody gets an auto response. And mm -hmm. it's a very polite response that says I do email like every week, once or twice. And I'll get back to you within two weeks. You know, so like managing people's expectations. Uh, and if it's super important, then talk to Mina and Mina will call me and tell me. Which isn't a way to say like I'm too important for you. It's a way to say like. I can't be at everyone's beck and call all the time. I do the same thing with messages. I haven't gone as far as Noah Kagan to turn off all message notifications. I still get the notifications, but I'll check WhatsApp or, or Messenger or iMessage like a few times a day sporadically and everyone in my life just understands that that's mm -hmm. how I roll and I get so much more done. Setting expectations um, is huge, which um, right. makes perfect sense. Okay, I love that. And then I would just say, like, tackle it piece by piece. Go through your day, and as you find things that are annoying, like, everyone, the one of the biggest things that I, like, hate with new business owners is, like, well, I just don't have time to train people, you know? Like, by the time I train someone, I'll have done it myself. Like, this is so egotistical thinking, right? We're it's like entrepreneurs. Totally We're the best at everything. You didn't know that? Yeah. Oh, what? It's what Chris calls superhero syndrome, <laughs> right? And I used to be like, I've evolved. I'm more efficient than... You know, I, I don't need an assistant. She would just slow me down. That used to be my thing. Total bullshit. Like, just do it and record it and narrate it once. Like, I decided I really hate doing all the phonic and all the editing of the podcast. I've actually never edited an episode of our podcast. I just I recorded a video that's like, I don't like the word um, like, you know, uh, any of that stuff. Just cut it out. I sent it over to this guy in Bosnia. He does it. He's awesome. Um but beyond that, like all the stuff that I was doing, uploading to Libsyn, ID3 tagging it, making sure there's a thumbnail for YouTube, we have a 21 step process. Each one, I just recorded a video like, hey, I'm clicking upload file. I'm making sure that it has the ID3. It's so fast. There's like no excuse not to do it. That's perfect. You know? Yes. That's why everyone's like, I just want that from you. That would be easier. Now, now when we're looking at other pieces that, that you're doing, which I love, um, going, okay, I spend this much time on this, just record it. I need to do that a lot more. Um, what totally. software are you using? I, use I usually use ScreenFlow because it'll go for a while, but it's a pain in the butt to like export and stuff. So what do you actually use? I use QuickTime most of the time. If really? I want to have a video, okay. yeah, I found another one. I mean, it's just basic. If you need to have a camera on it, yep. there's something called, I think, Screen Flick is the one. Okay. There's also this one called Flow, which is a Chrome extension. But if you need to record things outside of Chrome, that doesn't help you. Or okay. sorry, it's not Flow. It's Loom. Uh, but I mean, for your basic usage, QuickTime is amazing. Really? Okay. Uh, 
I'll take a look. And if you don't need, it's nice to have a little icon of the camera, you know, of your face in the corner, but sometimes it's also not nice. Sometimes no, I record I in my underwear. Yes. No, I don't want, I, I don't I want. had to go back for this email <laughs> and specifically it was like, Jamie will record audio and video. I was like, oh man, I got to put it. As what everybody said, man, it's video. What? No, I totally get it. Right. I don't, I don't want to have people seeing me when I don't want them to. That being said, um, uh, quick timer screen flow. Then you have the system already set up. So do you just upload it to your Thinkrif Thinkrific um, uh, course thing? Even if it's sort of like not half assed, but Janky. you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like oh, and then I actually, oh, I forgot how to do this, and then we move it here, right? Like yeah, I actually. So a lot of our team is in the Philippines, and sometimes internet is an issue. Like yeah. you know, once a week there'll be some kind of issue, and they'll write to me, "Hey, I'm on 3G right now." So I actually compress most of our videos. I use an amazing tool called Handbrake, and I have a preset in there that says strictly for internal use only, meaning it looks pretty crappy. You can kind of make out the text, uh, but I would never, I would never publish content like that. And it's, I can tell you when we publish content, it's 5,500 KBPS. Yep. And this is like 3,500 KBPS frame rate of 26 instead of 30. You get yep. the idea. Oh, I do. And uh, it's funny because totally. I that's actually something that we need to do because I sometimes record videos for my team and sometimes they'll be like, oh, this is exactly what one of the clients needs. So we'll send that. And I'm like, OK, that was uh -oh. that was just internal. That was from our. S so sometimes I share uh, internal SOP stuff very like because I'm open. And sometimes I'm like, that should have been an internal video. I'm like swearing. Right. Not that I'm not a so that's an transparent. SOP. By the way, that's an SOP. Yeah, I know. Like, I have to you said an SOP one. in yes. your Thinkific yes. thing, okay. which says like public or private. And you can just, uh, or like privacy codes, yep. right? So just design a system that says yep. like LVL1, LVL2, LVL3. LVL3 being like, this is our bank account. Like only my personal assistant knows this level one being like, all right, if a customer asks, yep. you know, we let them yep. know. That's very, very smart. I'm writing that down. That's definitely one that I need to enact also. I, like, oh, we sent passwords to, to a client. Awesome. Great idea. <laughs> Yay. Go team. I, I want to share one thing, mm -hmm. which is like, I think a lot of people come at this and they're like, you're taking the human element out of customer service or like the human aspect, emotion. I, I heard a lecture from the founder of Wix here in Israel, and he was talking about uh, Uber and autonomous cars and stuff like that. And think about this, like, I'll never forget what he said. He's like, when I get into a cab, in Israel, Uber is, is taxis. The government hasn't opened it up to private drivers. He's like, when I get into a cab, anything that that cab driver does that is human is a downside. <laughs> Meaning he slams on the brakes. That's human error. He takes me on another route other than what Google Maps or Waze or Apple Maps says based on the traffic. He's cheating me. Uh, he smokes in the car. Like almost anything that he can do is human. Here in Israel, he'll also offer if you want to marry his daughter. So all these like embarrassing things or, or uncomfortable things. He's like, I literally want a machine to just deliver the service. And I think the same is true of a lot of customer service. Like mm. people want to call in you know, they have a problem with their credit card, you build them twice. What would you rather, a human apologize to you or hit a button and it'll go, hey, we just scanned our records, you paid twice, I'm refunding it. Like, it, there's nothing more human than making a customer wait hours to get an email response. And I'm just, I'm trying to set up new bank accounts, we just changed our corporate structure. And I don't want to talk to a human, I just want them to run my credit yes. and just either open the account or don't open the account. Like, yeah. I don't want to wait on hold, I don't want it to go up to your underwriter who's going to review my blood type. Like, oh, so yeah. I think we overestimate the amount of human interaction that modern people want. In my first business, the reason I succeeded and beat out my competitors is everyone else was banking on this human element. Like you're buying a set of $4,000 wheels. Call me. We have a 1-800 number. I'll process your order over the phone. I'll make sure that everything is exactly the spec that you need. And I came in, I was like, dude, that sucks. I don't want to do that. I'm at school all day. Like I'm in college. I don't have time to call you during business hours. Online ordering, put all the pictures online, put all the specs online. You know, if we have to, we call the customer after and say, dude, you ordered the wrong pattern. Uh, and we just dominated hmm. because people don't actually want the human interaction for many, many transactions. So I would just say like, you know, uh, if it feels robotic, that's not always a bad thing.
Is there you know, a line on that then too? Because because you're right. Like sometimes I just want to die. Please line. don't let me talk to anybody. There, a lot of the people on the phone aren't as smart, right? And so that causes issues. But where where is that line? Especially if it's something that you've paid for. I think when emotion enters in, yeah. is the line. So either so here's an example. I don't get a lot of email, but the emails that I do get forwarded are the ones like, "Hey, my son has a really severe learning disability. I need help." He's get you know he's going to eleventh grade next year. Here's what's going on. Mm. Like that's emotional stuff that immediately gets forwarded to me. That's an SOP, by the way. Or a customer gets really really angry mm. uh, and is like, I can't believe this. I, you know, I found this course that it died. I'm so pissed, and that comes also directly to me. Um, I think when emotion enters in, because a, a machine is not going to be emotional back. But other times, you know. And I haven't flushed out that rule. I'm constantly, hmm. I think the the trajectory of our business is mapping out, uh, my theme for the year is like, uh, how do I, in my personal and professional life, how do I automate and create efficiency while maintaining intimacy? Ooh. So for example, if I have, like, a, here's a personal one for you. If I have a standing dinner every Tuesday at my house, that's automation, right? I know every Tuesday I'm going to have eight people that I'm going to interact with. And over the course of a month, I'll interact with 30 of my best friends. Great. So I'm, I'm pushing that boundary. So step number one, can I have like all the way, you know, we go level three. Can I have Mina just call each one of these people and say, hey, Jonathan's cooking dinner. Yep. Do you want to come? <laughs> Turns out not cool. Don't do that. Yeah, I like, tried that too. Like, <laughs> like, here's the oh, like that. no, probably not. Yep. <laughs> people don't like that. Yep. Um, Ethically, I don't really want me to, like, to forward them a message from me. But what I can do is have a keyboard shortcut that says, hey, I'm having eight people over for dinner. Can I count you in? Question mark. And mm. it's like having eight people over for dinner. By the way, I'm really big on this not having open loops thing. It's the whole uh, getting things done. Yes. I'm sure you've interviewed David Allen as well. I have, yes. So amazing. we both have. Yep. The open loops thing is really smart. So mm. like, hey, Jamie, I'm having dinner at Tuesday at King George not going to say the exact address, almost did. Uh, you don't need to bring anything. It starts at 8 p.m. sharp. Are you in or out? Question mark. You write one character, Y or N, no more open loop. Um, and it's very simple. And then like I have a spreadsheet that tracks like who have I invited not of course you know, you in the last two months. I are, love this. I want you to you work know, with my spreadsheet. personal assistant with all of it, <laughs> I'm like, please organize all of these pieces. Because I feel like, um, uh, especially on the personal side, it's way easier to, to put the time and effort into the business side. Whereas the personal side, I'm like, oh, I want to have another game night. Oh, shoot, who did I invite? I can't remember who I invited. We had a Facebook thing, right? And then we go back through um, and setting the time aside to be able to do something like that so you don't have to do it again and again. See, that's why I said I you're really good at that. Exactly. You already... <laughs> I have a spreadsheet and I'll tell you one more. I have a Zapier recipe where say I meet someone like super cool at a networking event. Mm -hmm. I just fire an email to whatever the address is in my address book, like Zapier dinner. And I just put their name in the subject and it fires it off and it adds them to the dinner party guest list. Can you just clone everything that you do and just put it on my laptop? <laughs> So that way I don't have to install anything. You know what? Again, <laughs> not to like plug the product, but all I do is I just, I speed read. So mm -hmm. I have like, you know, this little problem. Here's another example. I'm, I'm investing in Bitcoin right now. I'm like mm -hmm. super into it. And there's a lot of like friction and issues. And so now I, I just like did some speed reading. It turns out you can configure your Mac to just tell you the pricing. So I know right now that Bitcoin's at $1,863, 6,709 shekels. In case I'm away from my computer, I'll get a text message if it goes above 2,000 or under 1,500. It's like 10 minutes of reading. I can't about, outsource like, that to outsource. my people, right? I'll just have my whole team do the speed reading course and then deliver me the only information that I yeah. need now. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's also, I think you've probably no, picked up. For me, it's a passion. Yes. I love problem solving. I really do. So I, I enjoy it. But that would be a killer business, like going in and just automating stuff for people. Oh my gosh, if anybody's listening right now that will do that for me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to have my assistant, I'm going to buy your course, just so you know, I don't say that like ever. Thank and you. and I'm going to have I'm going to have my assistant go through it and then she can do it all on my, on my laptop when I'm not using it. Okay, good. What I just the 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 small detailed stuff, I'm not a fan of. I'm like I would much rather be spending time with my kiddos or something like that. Um yet 
the speed reading is definitely something that I need to to get up to speed with just on the email side of things too because I have clients and they email me long emails sometimes (laughs) and voice we use Voxer and stuff like that too Um, but there's a balance between those things also so uh, I love and I do want to say that yeah. The reason that we, we like along about a year after we launched the speed reading course, like our biggest reason for refunds is I didn't have the time. So we now bundle it with a productivity course, which is like watch this three or four hour course. If it doesn't save you an hour a day, like you gain the time that you need. So we don't get that excuse as much anymore. People are like, oh my God, I saved an hour a day. This is brilliant. See? So we have this like whole bundle. Good. All right. I'll get that one. Well, and that's the funny thing. I'm batching the interviews today. I have 22 interviews in three days. That's smart. So this summer I can hang out with the kiddos more and not have to worry about having uh, specific recording days. And so it's funny. So we do though we do some of the pieces, but not to the extent that you do. So I am willing to learn. I am totally willing to learn. Now that I'll so have can I time. share one more with oh, you? Oh, please do. As soon as I hit, so we're both recording this call, right? Yep. As soon as I hit the stop button, it's going to automatically split sides of the conversation, convert to MP3, and upload to Google Drive. With Okay, okay. So, Instant. So my guy usually does that, <laughs> but I, st- I still upload it to Google Drive myself. So how, so what, how do I do that? Tell me right now. I'm going to do it it's for a, all these It's interviews. a series of Hazel. Uh, Hazel. Hazel's this Mac app. Yep. It's a series of things that sniffs, and it'll say like, okay, if there's a file created by call recorder, uh, split. And then if there's a a split side that has side, you know Mm -hmm. how Call Recorder does it, then convert that instantly to MP3. And if there's an MP3 that says side, then shoot it up to inbox on Google Drive. And that folder is automatically shared with everyone who gets notifications. I love this. Okay. See, like that'll take you two minutes to set up. Well, right now we have my, but th- this is why I care so much about tech because my system right now is I go at the end of the day, I upload them to Dropbox for my editor. And if I forget, which I do, my team knows to check the next day and then set an Asana task to go and see. And I'm like, well, that's silly. There should be automation for this. But I haven't had so the this three seconds perfect, to do it. So yeah. thank you. This is a perfect example is like, I interviewed this guy who has RFID tags in his hands, which is a little extreme on automation. He has like on his left hand is all payments and health information. His right hand is all security. So door, car door, office door, whatever it is, right? And I asked him, I was like, honestly, like, does it save you that much weight in your pocket? And he goes, it's not that. It's when you go out of the house, you have to check. Do I have my phone? Do I have my wallet? Every time you get up from the restaurant, you're like, did I leave my credit card? It's this open loop that runs in your mind at all times. He's like, I don't think about that and I don't worry about it. Um, And it's the same thing. Like I used to worry, like, you know, sometimes it catches you. You're like, oh my God, did I remember to back up that interview that I did with freaking John Lee Dumas? Because if my Mac, which is on, was on its deathbed, goes like he's not going to give me the the <laughs> interview. I love again. that you said freaking John. It's like Lee that Dumas little screen. stuff. <laughs> it's that little stuff. Like totally the hard to book folks. Yes, I have my credit card numbers memorized because I'm so I don't want to oh, forget. You know what I mean? I just got new credit card numbers though. Now I have to memorize those. I have to take your course for the memorization. Oh, I can teach thing you how to too. do that. That's super fast and easy. Good. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, I good at it, but I bet you can number. help. Yeah, I can memorize the credit card number mostly permanently in under a minute. Okay. All right. All right. We'll yeah. talk about this afterwards. <laughs> I'll go grab my credit card. No, okay. <laughs> this is awesome. I told you it was going to be half an hour. It's way more, but I really appreciate that. I have a big old list of things to do. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I like getting homework. Yeah. I, I have one last question for you because we went sure. over a lot of different things, right? And I, and I want to eventually chat more about the selling of the course because we didn't talk too, too much about that. So mm-hmm. eventually, um, but what, what's one action, just one, <laughs> listeners can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million? All right. So this is the part where I'm really glad that I'm the memory guy because I, I totally thought the conversation went in an amazing direction. I thought it was going to go because of the title of the show and millionaire, thought it was going to go in a different direction. So Here's a nice summary of everything and what I had hoped we were going to touch on, which is try to take all the value that you have. So knowledge, wisdom, humor, you have a lot of value. I mean, that's why you're being paid to do what you do. People pay for your amazing personality and ability to ask questions and so on. Take that value and try to put it into systems, assets, processes, products, services that are automated in their delivery not degraded by repetitive usage. And in fact, maybe enhanced. The more people read your book, the better it becomes. There's more people to discuss it at the water cooler. And above all, uh, as valuable or more valuable 
to the end user than just getting the service from you. So it's arguably more valuable to learn speed reading on your iPhone in your underwear than to have me give you private coaching one-on-one. Uh, and I think if you do that, you're well on your way to, to doing really, really good things, not only for yourself financially, but also for other people. I always like to say I make way more money and way more impact not working than I ever did working. So that would be the one thing. One thing. So that's your one Very to short. many. So everything is the one to many with you, right? One thing that I can do now that will save many instances of time later. One thing now that we can sell to other people in a, on a large scale later. I love, I love it. And I think a lot of people need to take action on that <laughs> instead of just Lovely. saying it. So everybody that's listening, uh, make sure we really pay attention and just take some of those pieces off of your plate. Thank you so much for okay. coming on the show today, Jonathan. Where can we My find pleasure. your courses and more about you and all that? Yeah, so everything I do is at that URL, jle.vi. It's like a nifty little short one. But if people want to check out like free trials of the productivity course or the speed reading course, they can just go to becomeasuperlearner.com sign up for a free trial of either, sign up for a free trial of both. If they want to see automation at its finest, they will be entered into a marketing funnel with everything that I've written, but it will be automatically sent out to them and they'll get engagement and they'll get on webinars and all kinds of cool stuff. So, uh, and then the podcast is becoming a superhuman.com, but everything's linked on that one website. So I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I Thank really, you. really appreciate it's an honor. it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to check out more amazing resources, I'm only curating the best of the best. Go check out eventualmillionaire.com. You can take the Eventual Millionaire quiz, figure out where you are in business and what you need right now. Plus, you can look at curated resources specifically for you on the new Start Here page. I'm so excited. Please join us. Please let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. And have a fantastic day. Bye.